Hi, Rod Fleming in the Philippines here. Uh, today we're going to do um, a piece about the matriarchy in the Philippines, and that is because people have been asking about this. And although I have written about it on my blog, and I have made videos about this before, obviously it needs to be uh, gone over again. So let's have a look at it. Before I do so that, please, please, please go onto one of my sites, please. Patreon, PayPal, GoFundMe, buy me a coffee, ko five, whatever and please contribute something to the continued making of these videos, please. I'll just put up the addresses here. Now, matriarchy in the Philippines. Now, the interesting thing here is that the Philippines is normally considered to be quite a macho society, and that is true. How can it therefore also be matriarchal? And that's characteristic of what uh, Don Kulik and others have called the two-group society. And in the two-group society, you have a home group made up entirely of women and children, and maybe some males will come to them, and the away group, which is made entirely of men. There are nothing, nobody but men in that group. And in order to be in that group, you must perform masculinity. That's why so many traditional cultures have rites of passage for boys to, um, to show that they're sufficiently masculine to be awarded, to merit membership within the men group. And boys will typically gravitate towards this group as soon, really quite soon, soon after puberty. Here in the Philippines, um, it's quite interesting because they still carry out circumcision, um, but it's carried out at around about 12 years old. And that's the point at which the boy is expected to start becoming a man. Okay, he's expected to start to learn the uh, behaviours and the, the skills that are required to be a man in this culture. And, you know, some of these are useful skills, like being able to fix cars, being able to chop wood, you know, that sort of thing. Um, others will be really much more performance-related things like, you know, smoking, eyeing up the girls, being able to hold their drink, most of all, in not being penetrated. Now, that is a really important part. You can't be a man in these cultures if you accept penetration. So, what about the other one, the home group? Now, the home group is built around women. In fact, it's not really built around women. It's built around mothers and their children. And let's have a, just a little bit of a think back into the days when we were, you know, pre-civilized. We weren't the way we are now. And what would happen is that you would have groups of women who can't go out. I mean, humans have always separated tasks by, by sex, right? And anthropologists uh, Kuhn and Steiner have done a lot of work on this, although I think they put the date far too late. Humans are evolved to keep certain tasks for males and certain tasks for females. And that's really why when males are big and strong and females are basically small and weak. It's because they have farmed out the defense and the hunting to the men so that they can concentrate on the business of being mothers and looking after children. So these are two really big differences. Now, yes, I know there are some tall women. There are, some, there are many women who are taller than me. That's not the point. These are actually outliers. If we consider the Philippines, for example, the average, right? The average height for women in the Philippines is five feet. That's the average. And there are some quite tall women here. So there are some, you know, I've met women who are like four feet tall. Nobody bats an eyelid. It's within the range that is expected in the Philippines. Sorry, I'm squeaking the chair, we'll stop that. So what you have here is a situation where a weaker group of women form a core group, right? And their purpose is looking after the kids, raising and protecting the children. You know, children, human children are really very unusual. A human child is, to start with, not um, in a sexually repro reproductive state. You don't get to the point where they can actually reproduce until they're at least 12 years old. It occasionally happens a bit earlier, but it's rare. 
mostly it's about 12 year old. And actually in Asian culture, the um, puberty arrives a little bit later. And so it could be a little older, you know. If you think about an adolescent who's 12 years old, an adolescent girl, she's not capable of looking after herself, far less looking after a child too. I mean, sure, she probably has by that stage been looking after younger children, so she's learned a lot of the techniques that are required, but she couldn't be on her own. You know, a culture that left women to just look after their kids on their own, it wouldn't happen. And you might say, well, what, they could bond with men. Well, th there are reasons that that doesn't work, so I'll come to them. But in any case, if you have a woman who has to look after children, right, and her husband has to go away and find the food, then she's really vulnerable. She's vulnerable both to attack from predators and from other men. So what happens is the women cluster together in groups, which you call the home group. And within that group, the women are completely dominant. They're in charge. It's a woman's space. And if men enter that space, they have to abide by the rules set by the women, which will normally be things like no violence, no, uh, you know, no womanizing, none of that nonsense. You ought to behave yourself. And in some cultures, it will be no drinking, no swearing and that sort of thing. In others, that will be quite relaxed, as long as no violence, no womanizing. These are the rules. In cultures like this, men do not necessarily know which children are their own unless they form a specific nuclear bond with a particular woman. And there are many cultures where that doesn't happen. Right? Let's go back to this home group. So the home group actually is a matriarchy. It's a, a culture, a society of women based on women, run by women, and its function is to ensure that a maximum number of children reach maturity. If you go back to our 12-year-old girl, how is she going to look after her kids? She gets pregnant at 12 or 13, but she easily could. How is she going to look after that child? I mean, she doesn't have the life experience to do it. What happens is in these cultures, now I mean, I'm not saying that they're running out getting girls pregnant at 12. We're talking about you know a long time ago when these cultures evolved. What happens is that the other women group around her, right? Her mother, her aunts, her older sisters, they all contribute to looking after the young child. This is a matriarchy, right? It's run by women. Women are in charge. They're running the place. They operate the system, right? I mean, men are always going to be bigger and stronger. That's just undeniable. There's no way you can get around the fact that men are bigger and stronger than women because Men are bigger and stronger than women. It's as simple as that. But the way that women organize themselves in this social group gives them tremendous strength. Um, you know, if you read the news, and uh, you know, there is a group in India now who's uh, of women. And what they do is hunt down and beat men who rape other women. But organized women can do an awful lot. You know, the, the, the organization is what women do. That's why they're really good at bureaucracy. Men are not really particularly good organizers, although they can be, you know, very good at other things. But most men are not that hellish organized. They're not all Jordan, Jordan Peterson, you know. Women are the organizers. They're the ones who are going to keep the place clean. They're the ones who are going to say, no, no, we're going to need to do that and that. You know, and we're going to have to keep that amount of that, of this corn, because we're going to need it next year and all the rest of that stuff. They're, they're really good at this sort of stuff. And that's what they do. It's one of their tasks. So they're... Society, which revolves around the protection of children, is made up entirely of women, and maybe a few others will come to. And the hierarchy in it is very clear. The first rank is mothers. As soon as a girl becomes a mother, she gets status. Right? She's now a captain. She's got her own family to look after. But she's not an admiral or a fleet admiral yet. Her mother, who is the grandmother, she's actually in charge. And her mother in turn, the Lola, is the boss. You do not gainsay the Lola. Most of the, the running 
is done by the grandmothers. Right? That's the, the young girl of 12, she's got uh, her children now, but her mother is still in charge. She's going to do as her mother tells her. So these mothers are now um, effectively commanders of the units. So the real boss is always their mother in turn, you know, but she may well not be taking too much of an active role in running things. I mean, it might be that she makes strategic decisions, but actually most of the actual day-to-day -day management running is being done by her daughters, who in turn also have daughters. So that's how a matriarchy works, right? That's how a real matriarchy works. It's not a gynocracy, or a gynococracy, but I hate that word. Um, you know, the feminist idea of a matriarchy is a complete canard. It's this idea where, you know, women are the same as men. Women actually are men. And that's just ridiculous. It's just completely nonsensical. Nonsensical. Women are very different from men. But they have particular strengths. And these particular strengths that they have come from the fact that organizational ability gives them strength. So they organize. And we talked about, you know, there would be some males in this group. Now, obviously, any male child under around about 12 years old is going to be in the home group, right? Because the boys are in the home group. Right? They're two children. They're too young to go out with the men, right? To hunt or do whatever it is the men do. It's too dangerous for them. So they stay home with the mums. If you've got men who've been injured, um, harmed, or maybe are just too old, they're probably hanging around the periphery of the, the home group, that's the not men, the women, rather than following the men group, the away group, going out, because they can't. They're not, no longer fit enough to do that. So they probably, you know, here you'll see them sitting up at the crossroads uh, on the park bench, the benches that have been installed specifically for these men to sit on in the afternoons and chat, because you know, they're out of the women's way. They're not cluttering the place up. Get it? The women don't want them around the, the, the home space because they just make things messy. You know, it's like, you don't have to keep telling them to get up and move. You know, because I need to clean that. And that sort of thing. There is one other group, uh, which obviously will be of interest to followers of this channel, which make, takes a role within the, the home group. Remember, the home group is the one based on women and mothers, mothers and children. And that is those males who are not masculine, right, and therefore cannot join the away group, the group of men. Maybe it's because they're, they're homosexual, they, want, they desire men, they desire to be penetrated by men. Or maybe it's just because they so love the idea of being a woman, that that's what they want to do, be a woman. In either case, in the, these cultures, it doesn't matter, you've got green blood, right? You're a not man, you can't be a man because you do this stuff. So these are completely just lumped together and that's that. In the way that in the West would be unhelpful, to put it mildly. So they form a rank, right? A stratum of society, which is basically similar to the status that, uh, you know, unmarried daughters have, virgin daughters have. They're not yet women, right? They can't be women because they can't be mothers. But they can assist the mothers, right, in doing the, the things that need to be done, in looking after the children, taking care of the home, perhaps foraging, perhaps uh, tending the, the garden plots that are frequently found in this kind of society. They might have a little shop, you know, the, here you'd have Sari Sari stores, similar thing exists in Thailand, where the, the, the woman will be running it, it's very rarely a man who runs it, um, but her daughters will be helping. And so, in part, they're helping, but they're also learning. You know, it's on the job experience, if you like. Um, and trans women um, and other unmasculine males, lady boys they're called here, fall into that category. You know, they can help you out in the Sari Sari store, and many do. They can serve in the restaurant. Many do. They can be beauticians and work in the parlours. Many do. But they can't be mothers, so they can't access the hierarchy within the home group, which is made up, built upon motherhood, and they can't access the hierarchy of the men because they're not masculine. They have green blood, they can't do it. They can't, there's no way. They simply cannot join the men group. I mean this, just a, a quick aside, because I can see a mosquito and I need to get rid of it. <laughs> a quick aside, this is why 
there is a problem in the West because in the West you've had this uh, this lurch by the, the gay culture that to become the new gay man who is a kind of false masculinity, you know, uh, and attempt to actually be uh, part of the, the men group. And most men don't like that because we know, you see, we know. We know what you are. And ordinarily in a culture like this, it would be, no, no, that's fine. But you go off and you go to the, the other group, the home group, and you stay with the women and the kids. Don't come out with us and try and fix cars. And the problem, one problem, and this is, this is just an aside, one problem in the West is that that attitude of, yeah, I'm going to fix the car too because I'm manly, manly man, you know, like in the Navy, uh, uh, village people and all that. And men don't like it. It's not homophobia. It's just not. It's just that men don't like to have their space invaded by people who are not men. Anyway, that's enough of that. I'll come back to, I'll go out to something else now. Thank mm -hmm. you.